Okay, hello. hello newcomers again, people keep joining. Uh, so yeah, your mics are automatically muted if you're uh, trying to say something when class starts. I'll ask if they're muted, but yeah, we'll talk more about that um, in a moment. Okay, so it's great to see um, all of you here. Uh, two minutes until we're starting. Uh, so once again, great to see all of you guys are here and ready to learn. Okay, we're getting started in one moment. Uh, yeah, just one more minute until we get started. Okay, so uh, we'll get started now. Uh, let me share my screen with you guys just so you can see it. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you're able to uh, see my face as well. Okay, uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Azere and this is day one of learning HTML. Uh, so feel free to turn your cameras off if you'd like. Uh, I guess I'll just give a quick introduction to myself. Um, so currently I'm turning 15 tomorrow, actually. Um, I'm in high school. Uh, for fun, I like to play uh, video games. Uh, um, and yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't get what you said. Uh, we should start off with all our mics muted. Uh, hopefully everybody's able to hear me. I believe you guys should be able to hear me. Um, so yeah, just a quick introduction uh, to myself. Um, so yeah, I play video games. Um, I also enjoy playing sports. And um, yeah, I'm just like, a, I just do what most people my age would do. Okay, so as you hopefully know, uh, this is the HTML camp for learning with me. Um, in this camp, we'll be learning HTML, but as well as learning HTML, we'll also be learning a lot of techie things revolving around computers and the web. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be learning a lot of things. So yeah, this is just more of an introduction class so we can take it more chill and laid back because yeah, soon we're gonna be getting into a lot more, uh, more hard work and more learning. Uh, so something else I should mention is that uh, sometimes we'll have uh, extra activities as well. Sometimes it might be for you to present one class. Um, the reason we do this is because um, in this organization learning with me, I currently play the role of a mentor. And it's actually possible for you guys to become mentors too after uh, you go through this course and you're confident enough in HTML. So yeah, it's possible for you to become a mentor too. Um, if you're older and you're in high school, you can gain some perks and benefits uh, like volunteer hours it's also very possible to get paid real money and um yeah so if any questions feel free to type them in the chat i'm always looking at chat and um yeah see that's pretty much learning with me as like a whole in what we're doing so it's youth teaching youth and yeah so let's just continue with the presentation um so classroom environment expectations uh, so at times I may ask you guys questions uh, revolving around a topic we're speaking on. 
Um, I would like for you guys to answer them in chat and you can also keep your mic muted. Um, something I recommend if you're just having uh, connectivity issues, by the way, as well, on top of all this, is to turn off your cameras because uh, currently you do not need your cameras, but it, you can keep them on if you'd like. Uh, but yeah, that'll just help you to connectivity issues, I believe. Um, so yeah, once again, uh, the mic, the session has already started, but uh, you should please mute your mic once you join, unless if there's something uh, you need to say that can't be said in chat easily. Um, also, just something to keep in mind is that it's likely in the future that we'll be switching platforms for where we hold these virtual sessions. Uh, so once again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to test them in chat. Uh, some guy I guess I can uh, elevate on is Google Meets chat. So if you look at Google Meets currently, if you have that tab open, that's probably where you're seeing me. Um, I believe to the right side of your screen, there should be an option to open up chat. Uh, it's like top right-ish beside the time. So you can open up chat and you can type stuff there. Uh, some of you have already been typing there. Just to test it out, I'll type something. Uh, I believe I'm not presenting my screen currently anymore. But thank you, though. Uh, I'm OK, I guess I'll just continue presenting so you can read if you haven't already. But thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, how would I pronounce your name, the person who just helped me? OK. I'll Opelua, okay. Be, be, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll get it by tomorrow. <laughs> okay, let me just keep adding these people. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's likely we'll be switching platforms in the future. Hopefully, you heard that part. Um, Google Meets, there's a chat function. You should test it out if you haven't gotten the chance already, because that's where you'll be answering questions. And then, yeah, if you need to say something that can't be said in chat easily, uh, you can then you can unmute your mic. But for most of the class, you should have your mic muted just so the other learners don't get distracted and I don't get distracted. Okay. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, once again, just type it in chat, type any questions, throw up the whole thing in chat, and I'll be looking at chat. Okay, so we're moving on to HTML, uh, the main topic of the class. So the first thing I think we should start off with is what it even stands for. Um, so HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Um, so I don't expect us to know what a Hypertext Markup Language is. And um, yeah, so we probably don't know what it is. We're not expected to know what it is. OK, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, once again, just for things like that, uh, this doesn't mean I hope this doesn't come off mean or rude because this is I'm trying to say this in the friendliest way but please stay that in chat once again just so it doesn't uh like interrupt the class in a sense so once again that's not meant to be that's supposed to be in the friendliest way I'm saying that okay so hypertext markup language um so we've pretty much already said what html is a hypertext markup language a markup language uh, so what is a markup language uh, a markup language, uh, in other words, is a computer language that uses tags to define elements within a document. Uh, so we might have heard the word elements, but once again, tags is kind of more of a new word. Uh, so tags is something we'll be actually learning how to compose in this class. Uh, we'll be learning how to create an HTML tag. And uh, yeah, so an element, uh, if we know what elements are, elements are kind of like components to things. Uh, so yeah, an element of a web page could be an image. Um, yeah, so elements are just kind of I don't know how to explain it. Elements are just elements in a sense. So if you have any questions about that, once again, put it in chat. Any comments, you can put that in chat. Um, so yeah, HTML is a computer programming language used for creating websites and web pages. Uh, so by websites and web pages, what I essentially mean is all the websites we usually visit on a day-to-day -day basis. So I know a website I commonly visit is youtube.com. So that is a whole entire website. And you can go to different web pages with people's videos. So I use YouTube a lot, and that's a website. So with HTML, we can actually build those websites like YouTube, um, some more examples, Facebook, um, even maybe some Flash game websites. You can build websites like that with HTML. Uh, something on top of HTML is that it's a great language to learn if you're new to coding. Uh, so if you're just entering the coding environment, um, you've never really heard about coding or programming, and you're not even get on the keyboard, uh, it's, that's all right, because we're learning that in this camp. 
Okay, so writing HTML. Oh, actually, I just saw something in chat. HTML is what you used to create websites, correct? Yep, you're 100% correct. You use HTML to create websites. So now we're talking about writing HTML. Um, so the fastest, easiest, and simplest way to write HTML uh, is through a text editor. So is anybody familiar with what a text editor is? Okay, so a text editor is a computer program that allows you to edit text. Now, if you're not even familiar with the word edit, uh, to edit something means to make a change to it. So when we're editing text, uh, maybe when you're, if you've ever written in uh, a paragraph to submit in school and you had to make changes to it because of your punctuation, you were editing that paragraph and it had text in it because that text was your writing. And yeah, so you're basically kind of editing text in the real world. So pretty much a text editor is, yeah, it's like a place where you can edit a text file document and um, yeah, so I'll actually open one up in front of you guys. So let me share my screen just so we can see this. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment and then I'll start sharing it again immediately. So one second, please. Okay, um, so hopefully we can see my screen. I'm on my desktop page currently. Uh, okay, yeah, I believe it's sharing now. I'm on my desktop page currently. And um, yeah, so let me show you a text editor. Um, if you're watching this or you're participating in this virtual session on a Windows device, if you're participating on a Windows device, uh, you have something pre-installed on your computer or your machine, sorry, called Notepad. So Notepad is a text editor and I believe the original purpose of it was just to take quick notes. Um, so I don't think you're going to be able to read this text. So let me just zoom in a bit so we can read it easier. And so yeah, this is a text editor. Currently it's untitled because I've just opened it up, but I can type anything within it. So hello, and that is it. So I can save this and then I've just used the text editor. We can edit text. With it. Um, so if I already had a pre-existing uh, document open, so maybe an essay. So this is an essay. Uh, sorry, I don't really understand that. Um, so hello, this is an essay. Maybe I just had a big essay. I'll just copy and paste out a couple times for us. Um, if I save this, let me just save this as something I'll call it test. If I save this, I can access it. So let me pull that up now, what I just created. Uh, hold on one second, please. So I can go to, uh, this is my file explorer. I can go to where I had the document and then I can reopen it up again. And then our document opens up and then we have all the text I had written. So hello, this is an essay. And then really to get down to it, we'd be editing text if I had a saved document and then I just saying something. So I said, this is not an essay. And yeah, so that's pretty much a text editor. So if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to put that in chat as well. Or comments even if you want some examples. So we're not going to save this. Let's just close out of here. Stop sharing my screen again for a moment so I can open up the slides presentation for us. Okay, so one of you said you do not have Notepad. Uh, so if you don't have Notepad on your machine, um, that's either because you're not on a Windows machine currently, you're not using uh, Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, or that's because uh, you're not searching in the right place. Um, so if you are on Windows 10 and you can't see Notepad, okay, so you said you're on Windows 10, okay, but that's not you having the issue. But if you are on Windows 10 and you can't find Notepad, uh, maybe I can show you how to do that briefly after class. Uh, so let me just share my screen with the presentation again and we'll continue moving on. So once again, any if you have any questions so far or any concerns, just feel free to put them in chat. Okay, so I believe my screen should be being shared again. And yeah, so we'll move on. 
Um, so there are actually uh, other external text editors you can download or install, you install from uh, other web pages. You can download other text editors created by other people. Um, these ones have their own pros and cons. Oh, let me just go back a slide. Uh, so these text editors have their own pros and cons. Um, you might have heard of some of these. These are just five examples, or sorry, four examples besides Notepad. And um, yeah, by the way, this is what the Notepad icon looks like if you're on Windows 10. I'm only mentioning, I believe my, I believe my mic was muted. I'm only mentioning uh, Windows 10 for now because I am on Windows 10. I might be on a other device in the future. Um, so Vim, uh, that's a very famous text editor. Uh, in your free time, you can actually search up these text editors and download one of them if you don't have them already. Um, so there's Notepad++. Uh, this is the text editor I used to use. OK, I believe somebody muted everybody. OK, uh, thank you for telling me Ayumi Day and the other person. How do I pronounce your name? OK, yeah, he does, he does keep muting everybody. Uh, I think one of the admins in the call should solve that problem in a second. Yeah, okay. I'll just look out for if I'm muted. I think they're going to solve the problem, though, so we're good. Okay. Um, so there are many various text editors uh, with their own pros and cons, and the app already said that. Um, so yeah, usually their pros and cons just have to do if you like the way uh, they operate, their interface. Um, I'll be showing you guys a text editor in the future outside from Notepad because as we saw, it's pretty much just a text document. And yeah, so let's move on. So once again, any questions or anything, uh, you can put it in chat. I'll just look at chat currently. You can't have Notepad on a Chromebook. Um, I believe that is correct. I believe that is correct. Um, sorry for the interruptions, guys. Um, yeah, I believe that is correct. You can't have a notepad on a Chromebook because that's only on Windows machines. Uh, so Chromebooks, uh, MacBooks, and then Windows boxes are all different operating systems. And then they have some things pre-installed and they don't. OK, so let's just move on. Uh, so we're moving on to some terms now. Uh, once again, this is a beginner class. So hopefully we know these terms. Or sorry, we're going to be learning these terms because we can't be expected to know them if we're new to this and we're a beginner. So first, we're going to talk about angle brackets. So first, something I also should, I should mention is that all these terms talk about you can actually find on your keyboard. So if you look at down at your keyboard right now, um, like right above the space bar, or actually, if you look at the M key, if you look to the right, you can see these two arrow things. Those are like those are what we call angle brackets. Um, so the one closest to your M key is the left angle bracket, and then the one besides the left angle bracket is the right angle bracket. Um, so you guys probably are in math class or you've taken a math class. Uh, there's a chance you have, might have not discussed it yet, but you may have, and you may have known these symbols already as the greater or less than symbols. Um, so when we use a right or angle bracket, uh, we have the, the non-pointy side pointing towards a number. It's basically saying that number is larger than a number number. So in this case, what this statement is saying right here in math is that seven is greater than two which it is, so we would say this statement is true. Uh, so together, if we're just talking about both of these symbols, we would call them angle brackets. Um, so if you have a text document open, or maybe even in chat, I would like you guys to test out typing uh, angle brackets. So I'll type it out uh, first. You might not see my screen in a second, but I'll type it out first. So yeah, I just typed out angle brackets. Okay, great. Uh, I saw one of you typed out a statement, seven is greater than two. Yep, I see the angle brackets, that's uh, great. So yeah, those are angle brackets, and you're going to be writing them a lot when we're writing code. So that's just one of the terms uh, we should know. So once again, a left angle bracket and a right angle bracket. Yep, 45 is greater than 23. OK, yeah, so you guys might already be familiar with this. And if you're not, that means you just picked it up very fast. And yeah, so you can know. By the way, this is more close to math class, uh, just saying this quickly. But you can also use it to say things are less than, of course. So instead, I could say 5 is less than 10, and that statement still works. Uh, so yeah, great examples. I'm seeing all of them. Yeah, I haven't seen a single incorrect one yet. And yeah, so that's just more related to math class. So if you haven't discussed it yet in math, you can uh, show your teacher that you know something before she taught it. So yeah, that's great. And yeah, so we call these angle brackets, and we use them a lot in HTML. So the next term we're going to be talking about, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen. So the next term we're talking about is HTML slashes. 
Um, so these are just slashes. Uh, you can also find these on your keyboard. Uh, it's close to the right angle bracket. Do you see that slash? It's also how you activate a question mark. Uh, so hopefully we see that slash. We can also try typing that in. Yeah, I see you guys are already trying that out. Um, so that slash uh, we see is the forward slash. So that's how we activate the forward slash. Uh, we do not need to press shift to activate that. We can just type it by itself. And we also see um, the backslash. Uh, for me, that is above my enter key. So that may be above your enter key as well. Um, so yeah, so something else to note about these keys is that later in your journey, uh, you'll come to notice that they're used in a lot of other techie things revolving around computers. I guess I can mention this now, but I don't expect you to um, understand it, but it's used in things like um, maybe locating a file directory, it's separating uh, different directories, and um, yeah, just used a lot of other techie things. So yeah, I'm seeing all of you guys take that in chat. And yeah, that's great. So those are slashes. Uh, so the hard thing that you might forget sometimes is di differentiating a forward and backslash. Um, so the easiest way I can think of uh, differentiating them is by just remembering that we read from left to right. So then in, sense, in a sense, we could say that if, um, if the top part of the slash is pointed towards the right, that means it is a forward slash. Because if we remember, we read uh, left to right. And if we're backslash or backslash, if it's pointing, uh, the top part is pointing left, it is a backslash. Because we do not read right to left, we read left to, we read left to right. OK. So let's move on again. So now we're talking about HTML elements. So if we remember, we said a markup language uses tags to define the elements within a document. So I bet we still do not understand what that really meant. So we're just going to learn about elements now. Uh, so if we remember, elements are basically a component on the web page. Uh, so yeah, there's a huge amount of HTML elements, and these are just some we'll be covering soon. Uh, so the first one we have here is the HTML element itself. So what this element does is that it's basically the component of HTML itself being defined in the document. So this is basically the whole HTML page itself. Next, we have the P element. Uh, so the P element defines a paragraph. So a paragraph or text can be an element on your web page. Uh, the next one is the H1 element. So H1, the H is actually short for heading, and the one represents the largest heading, so it's closest to zero, I guess you say. Um, so yeah, this defines the largest heading in a document. So a heading uh, could be different from a paragraph, of course, and yeah. Uh, so next we have the head, uh, which defines a container for metadata. Uh, I don't expect you guys to know what metadata is at all either, so we'll be discussing that later. And um, we also have the body element. Uh, this defines the main body of the web page. Uh, basically, the body element is where you put all the content of your web page. So all the things your viewer is going to see or the person who's visiting your web page will see it from the body element. So if we can actually have analogies for web pages, uh, we can have the head, the body, and the footer. And lastly, the ones we're covering soon, once again, is the image elements. So short for IMG, that's what we call it in HTML. So this defines an image in HTML. So hopefully this is starting to come along now. This is starting to come along now. Uh, but yeah, we still have a lot to talk about before we have complete understanding of it. Uh, let me just check chat again. Uh, sorry, I believe I was not looking at chat, so that's my mistake. Uh, make sure there haven't been any questions. Okay, so metadata. Oh, yeah, somebody asked what metadata is. Uh, we actually don't need to worry about this now, but we definitely will be discussing this um, in the future in, or in the near future. We're covering this very soon. Uh, so, yeah, it's all right to not know what metadata is. This actually isn't important to us right now, but the rest kind of are. So P is short for paragraph, uh, H1 is short for heading one, and IMG is short for image, just in case you didn't know that. Okay, so now we're going on to HTML tags. Uh, so the reason we learned all those previous terms and symbols is so that we can compose HTML tags, because pretty much HTML is built up on tags. When you're writing HTML, there's no way you're gonna write it without, there's no way you're not going, there's no way you're going to write it without using a single tag. Um, so here's the composure of tags. So tags have opening and closing tags. So in between these opening and closing tags would be your content. So in this case, we have the um, P tag, or sorry, the P element that's being used and turned into an HTML tag. 
Uh, so for the opening tags, it starts off with a left angle bracket, the elements, and then the right angle bracket. So I'm looking at chat, and I've seen that you guys have actually already created your own opening and closing tags for um, the HTML element and the P element. So you guys are actually very fast on that, and that's impressive. Um, so yeah, now for the closing tags, uh, the composure is pretty much very similar to the opening tags, except now right after the left angle bracket, which we talked about earlier, uh, we have a forward slash. Um, so this forward slash, I'll just type it in chat just so you can see it. Uh, so once again, we're just using the P element. So the element in this case can be changed with any other element we just discussed. Uh, so the image element, yeah, somebody can try typing in the image element if we type, if we remember that. And yeah, so well done everybody so far. Uh, yeah, good job everybody. So I see the closing tag for HTML. And yeah, so I'm seeing all of these. So these are great. But now, right now, I still haven't explained because assuming that you guys have never heard of HTML or, or any of this, I still haven't explained what's the point of closing and opening tags. So we're about to actually get into that. Um, so these tags actually have to do with HTML's page structure. Uh, so we've already discussed start tags and end tags and how they can be easily differentiated. Um, so this is, say we have a text document open and this is our HTML text document. Um, so this is what it looks like. Uh, we have start and closing tags for everything. So if you remember, the HTML element defines the whole HTML um, body. So that's going to start and close, and then everything that has to do with HTML will be in between those tags, okay? So we have this starting and then closing all the way down here, and then everything else between is our HTML talk, uh, sorry, I said taco, HTML content. Okay, so after that, now we have another opening and closing tag called head. Uh, in the head tag, besides putting metadata, or I guess I'll mention it briefly now, metadata is just information on the web page. Besides putting that, we can also put the title for our web page. Um, so we can have a title. So in this case, I just call the title a cool title. Um, we have to remember that the title is also another uh, element and it has to start and close with the tag. So remember everything's starting, opening and closing. And um, yeah. So the head tag closes since we're done with it because we don't want the head tag to be seen as everything else in the code. And um, yeah, so then we have the body tag. Yeah, sorry, let me just look at chat just to make sure I'm not missing out on anything. I'm new to looking at chat, so please forgive me if I miss out on your comments. Um, so, okay, I don't think I missed anything. Um, so then we have our body tag. And if we remember, uh, the body tag is where all the content of our web page goes. So when we open up our web page, if you give somebody the uh, link to your web page and they go visit your web page, everything in between the body tag is what they'll see. So in this case, I've used the P element, which we know is used for creating paragraphs and texts. And I've used to create a uh, text on the page saying a cool paragraph. And then we have the closing of the body. And then we have the closing of the HTML. Just remember we have that. So there are actually very few exceptions for uh, things that don't start, follow the start and end tag rule. So some things don't have closing tags, and some of them only require one tag. So you can imagine the body tag or another tag that doesn't close with the forward slash. Um, so I have the taco picture here. If you compare it to a taco wrapping, so because everything or all the tags wrap uh, one by one. And yes, that's why I have the taco. It's kind of an analogy to it. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so we're getting closer to the end of the class, but I still have a lot of things to show you guys. Um, we're going to actually be leaving the slides presentation, and I'll be showing you guys uh, using SoulLearn's code playground to test out our own HTML code. Um, but yeah, so you can visit SoulLearn.com uh, or download SoulLearn on your device. Uh, by I mean mobile device, because uh, I believe it is on the App Store or Play Store if you're on Android or iOS. Um, so yeah, you should make a Soul Learn account and navigate to HTML fundamentals, and yeah, we'll start learning from there. So uh, Soul Learn is pretty much a platform. Just to say briefly, it's a platform for learning as well. Uh, we use it for extra activities just to keep learning throughout the week, since these classes only are every Saturday. And um, yeah, uh, so right now we're actually going to leave this before we move on to the extra activities. And yeah, let me just make sure I share my screen again so we can see my entire desktop because now we're going to be doing a little bit more so hopefully everybody can hear me i'll just look at chat to see if there are uh, any questions <laughs> but yeah you guys are doing great so far from what i've been seeing with the communication chat you guys are doing great 
Uh, so nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, I didn't really do a proper introduction. I didn't ask guys for all your names. We do have a lot of people, so it might be harder. Uh, so while I'm actually getting this set up, uh, could you guys maybe type in your name and one of your hobbies? Because I'd love to learn about you guys. Two K twenty. Oh, okay. Hello. That's the basketball game. Yeah, I know that one. I play on Xbox, which he might not like, because some people like PS4 more. But yeah, I also play video games. Ayumi Day. Uh, my name is. Sh That's a cool name. I'm probably can't pronounce that correct. Sharif. Hmm. That's a cool name. You might have to unmute your mic so I can hear how you pronounce that. that I like. All the names are actually cool. Hello. Sharif. Oh, okay. Thing. That's great. Yeah, I like that name. Nadira Pearl. Wow, that's another. I've never heard somebody named Pearl. That's a really cool name as well. Unique name as well. I like technology and football. Oh, football. By football, do you mean like, because in America, I'm in America, we call that soccer here. So do you mean a uh, soccer or do you mean more like the throwing one with your hands? Oh, soccer. Yeah, I, I really like soccer as well. My name is Nefumi. My favorite sport is dance, and I hope we can all be friends. Yeah, dance is very cool. I'm, I myself am not a good dancer, uh, but yeah, dance is very cool. Um, I am today. Hobbies are football and soccer. Yep. Soccer. Yep. I hate soccer. <laughs> no offense. Yeah, that's all right. Everybody has their own opinions on this stuff. Uh, anyways, I'll keep looking at chat, playing on PS4. Okay, yeah, but let me continue on with the presentation before I get too distracted. Um, so what was I going to do? I was going to share my screen. So I'm going to share my entire screen. And yeah, so you guys can keep looking at chat. I'll keep looking back. Cooking. Yeah, I also like cooking a lot as well. And yeah, soccer, soccer. Yeah, soccer must be very popular. A lot of people in my school do not like soccer for some reason. Okay, so my screen should be getting shared. Uh, so let's just do a scenario. So you're on your home screen. Uh, I'm using the web browser Chrome. Uh, we're actually talking about more about web browsers next class. But I'm, you're on your home screen of your web browser and you're ready to go on Solo. So what you can do is that you can type in sololearn.com. That's the first thing to type. Let me just make sure that goes away. Uh, go like that. So you can type in sololearn.com. You can press enter. You're on Chrome. Okay, that's great. I just went first to load up. Technology, math, and science, and basketball, dancing, singing. Well, okay, that's very cool. That's very cool. Dancing, yeah. I wish it would be very, I can imagine it's cool to be a great dancer. Swimming, sports, playing video games. Yep, okay. Oh, that's great. Uh, Sharif, you posted the link. Okay, yeah, you're a great uh, helper. That was great. You posted the link in the chat. Uh, so yeah, you can actually follow the link uh, Sharif put in there for solarn.com and you can visit uh, the website. Uh, so it's pretty much learning to code. Uh, it should take up at most in a day if you're doing it. Every, we're not even doing it every day. But at most, you should be able to get this done in one day in less than 20 minutes, hopefully. Uh, so this is just an extra activity. It's not something you're spending hours on. And um, yeah, so before we showcase, or I guess we'll showcase courses first. So we'll go to courses, uh, select courses. And then I can actually post the link to the direct place you need to be. So courses. And we go down to HTML fundamentals. And now we are under HTML fundamentals. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Sharif, for that link. You helped a lot of people. So you can press on that link, Sharif, put and go to the website. So I'll just put an exact link to that page we're going to. You press on that link, it'll take you exactly to the place. So we're under HTML fundamentals. So these are just quick topics. We're going to be covering them slowly. So this should not take you too much time. Uh, so you'd make an account first, of course. So you'd sign in and then press make an account. Hopefully, we've all made account for these programs in the past. And yeah, so you can actually use a Google account. You can connect accounts. Uh, let me just showcase this a bit, I guess. So you can actually connect accounts. Uh, you can sign in with Google if you have a Gmail account. Uh, or you can just use the Learning With Me accounts. Um, I recommend you use the Learning With Me accounts because um, they do spam your email. So if you have, if you don't want to use your like main Google account, I recommend you use the Learning With Me account because they will spam your email. You can just say your Learning With Me account is just for educational purposes. 
Um, so yeah, you can just make an account. And then once you've done that, you would navigate to the link I put in. So let me just copy and paste that in my own web browser so I can go there. And yes, yeah, so this is HTML fundamentals. So we're about to get into homework. I'll duplicate this tab because we're actually going to back to it soon. I said homework, extra activities. I duplicate this tag. And um, yeah, so hopefully we can all see my screen. Okay, that's good. So the next thing we're doing, hopefully, uh, actually I'll wait a bit. Does anybody have any questions about getting to HTML fundamentals? Is anybody having trouble with that? Uh, you do not need to create your account right now. Uh, you could do that after the class. You can, if you think you can do it fast enough and it won't uh, get you too far away from the actual virtual session, sure you can do that now. So how do you make an account? Um, okay, so if I recommend you just duplicate the tab if you already went to still learn, or if you're on still learn, you should see sign in at the top. I would go to sign in. So once you're on sign in, it's going to say new to still learn. So are you new to still learn? You haven't used it before? Create an account. So this create account uh, text is actually a link. So you can press on this link. It's going to ask for your email, uh, your name. It's just going to use your name to display it. And then, yeah, you can create your own password and sign up with email. So if I were to fill these out, I'm not actually going to fill it out. If I just fill out each section, I was going to text at gmail. Uh, I'm sure I put in a name. I'll just put in my real name and I create a password so I can sign up with email. So of course, this isn't a real email, so I wouldn't sign up with this. Uh, so yeah, I recommend you use the learning uh, with me account. So in your case, it would be maybe, I think it's your name at learning with me.org. Uh, so yeah, once again, somebody posted another link, Malichi. Can you help me pronounce that name? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but yeah, he has the link to sign in as well. Okay. Mal oh my gosh, I have a friend named Malachi. <laughs> Sorry. I have a friend named Malachi and I'm... <laughs> I have a friend named Malachi. Sorry for that mistake. Um, Okay, yeah, Malachi, thank you for that. I, that's really my bad. I do even, I have friends who have that name. Okay, thank you, Malachi, for that. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's my bad. I did not mean, I was not even thinking. Okay, so hopefully we've all created accounts and now we're moving on to the next thing. If you have any problems, uh, just uh, type it in chat. Okay, so let's go to Code Playground now. So another, if we look at this um, bar at the top, we're gonna see all our, the links to different pages. We want to go to Code Playground because we're going to be fiddling around with that a bit today. Uh, so hopefully you've all reached Code Playground. Uh, now we're going to select New Code and then it's going to open up uh, kind of like a fake text editor, or I guess you could say text editor for us. So let me zoom in a bit so we can see this better first. Um, are you already on the solo learn page? I might have went too fast, that's my bad. Yeah, okay. So I think something on any page you're on, if you look at the top, you see the Soul Learn logo, you see courses and you see Code Playground, right? Let me zoom in so you can see this better. Okay, so select uh, Code Playground and see where that takes you. And then from there, we'll continue on. Uh, I think actually Malachi posted the link there. Thank you, Malachi, again. It says I should sign in when I sign in, it says it's wrong. Uh, you may have a mistake in your password. Of... Okay, yeah. Thank you, Sharif and Malachi. You guys are very helpful. Okay, so you're on the Code Playground plate. Please click select New Code. Yeah, you guys might get hired as admins. So you guys are mod moderators, sorry. But yeah, you guys are great. <laughs> Okay, so are you on this page now? You, everybody should be following along as well, by the way, because we want, so, uh, okay. Okay, that's great. So everybody should hopefully be on a page that looks like this by now. We should have a 
blank white screen here, and then we should have a text editor over here. So we can edit text and we can write things in. Okay, uh, so hopefully that's the case. Yeah, uh, Sharif posted a link there as well. And yeah, Malachi and Sharif are helping you guys out in chat. And yes, that's great. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can see this now. Uh, if you haven't set it up, just make sure you're able to figure it out and get to it on your in your own time. Um, but yeah, so this is the text editor we have. We might actually rec. We might. So we. Thank you guys. You guys are very, very, very helpful. Wow. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. You guys are actually very, very helpful. I would have not noticed. I would have just done the whole presentation and ended it with my mic muted. Thank you very much, guys. You guys are actually helping me a lot. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I was muted. I think I'm good now. Um, so yeah. So we have the text editor open and something we might actually notice, let me just zoom in on this only, is that we have our opening and closing text. So we see the HTML element here and we have it opening and closing. So everything wraps. So now to actually help our understanding, we're going to test this out now. So I'm just gonna zoom out so we can see the output. Um, the output is where we're gonna see the effects of our HTML. So this is where we write the HTML code and this is where we see what it looks like on a web browser. So hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing I know we can test it out with is with a paragraph. So when somebody copy and paste or write the P tag for me in the chat, I'll just copy and paste it and use it. Just to test it out. So somebody please, uh, okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you guys. So I'm just gonna use that P tag you guys put there. And if we remember it creates, what does the P create? Actually, I don't remember an image. Let me tell me with paragraphs. Okay, yeah, you guys are correct. Uh, the P tag creates a paragraph and you can just say text as well. So I've copied and pasted it in now. Let me just zoom in again. And now I'm going to write something. So I might as well create the closing tag as well while I'm here. So then we have the opening and closing tag. So in between this, in between the space is where we write our text. So yeah, well done everyone, correct. So I'm gonna write something. I'm gonna write, this class is so helpful. I want this to show on my web page. So I just want this to say this class is so web helpful on my web page. That's the all I want is basic text for now. So it's gonna press run. Hopefully we can see that run option. So this run button is basically what um, saves our work and then shows the output when we update something to our code. So I'm going to press run. And then wow, we have our output right here. So I hope we can read that. So let me zoom in a bit. So this class is so helpful. So do we see how that correlates with our HTML code? You remember this is in the body tag, so everything's opening and closing. Something else we can add, um, this one's gonna be a little bit difficult, but how do I get like a title? I want like a heading. Does anybody know the um, tag for that I can use? Can somebody put that in chat for me? H1, okay, thank you. Thank you, I owe me day for that one. Oh, sure, if you accidentally put an exclamation mark, but I know you just press shift on accident, but thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody, the H1 tag. So I'm gonna get the H1 tag now. I'm just gonna put that in, and then I want it to say what's it called. I want it to say, um, hello. And I'm gonna say fun fact. And now I'm gonna run my code. Oh, I didn't put, okay, that did not look great. Or actually, no, I'll leave it like that. Okay, guys, something went wrong. Can somebody tell me what actually went wrong here? Um, this is supposed to be a tinier paragraph. Can somebody here, I'll zoom in on the code, maybe somebody can point it out for me. Can somebody tell me what I did wrong here? I have my H1 tag, then I have my P tag. But then for some reason now, my uh, P tag gets capitalized. Am I missing something? You didn't close it. I didn't close. I didn't close what? What am I missing specifically? Uh, okay, thank you. That was correct. I forgot the close tag. So some, can somebody copy and paste that for me in chat just so I can use that. I need it for the H1 element. Okay, thank you. Just gonna copy and paste that. Thank you, Sheriff. That was fast. 
Okay, now, now it's good. Hmm, this is just appearing as text on the screen. It's not under any element. Am I missing something again? Am I missing something this time? Is it correct? Why isn't it? This should be a heading. This should be like bigger, right? Fun fact should be bigger. Oh, so the content needs to be in between the closing and opening tags. Okay, I kind of get that. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was just a test question. You guys probably already knew the answer, but I was just teasing you guys. Okay, so yeah, that is correct. And now if we look at our outputs, let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, so now we have our output. So we have the heading tag being used, uh, heading one. So fun fact, and then this class is so helpful because that's the uh, paragraph. Uh, so something else I can do, uh, something interesting. So we have heading one. Remember that one represents the largest. But what else I can do is I'm just going to copy and paste this just so I don't have to, or I guess I'll write it up from scratch again just to show how it's done. And now they're actually heading two. There's heading three. There's heading four. So I'm going to try doing something. I'm just going to skip heading two. I'm going to go to heading three, okay? So we have heading three now. So there's actually another element called heading three, and that's just a smaller heading one. So heading two, heading three, heading four is just basically the heading and it's slowly getting smaller and smaller until it becomes just the P tag and just regular text. So here I'm gonna write, um, I'll write blah, because I don't have anything in mind. So I'll write blah and then I'll run my work. There's something important to do. Uh, if you don't see an output, that's because you're not pressing run. So I'm going to run my work and now we see the output. So now we can kind of see that we have a smaller heading now, but it's still uh, noticeably more noticeable than the uh, P element. So I can actually do H2 as well in H3 and H4. So these are just some heading packs you can know. So these are, we just learned a couple more uh, elements. Okay, so any questions about that? Is everybody able to do it in chat? Anybody? Uh... Okay. Yeah, that's my fault. It should not get caught. That's my fault. Okay. Okay, that's completely all right. Um, the reason I wasn't actually talking about putting this website online so we can type it in and we can go to the website is because right now, if we were to actually do that, we would have nothing to put on our website. Uh, Cause right now we're trying to learn stuff we can put on our website. Cause if I asked you guys to say, I want a picture of a dog on my website, we probably wouldn't know how to do that yet. Uh, kind of get what I'm saying. So to put our website online, um, we cannot, it's not as simple as sharing or pressing a button. Uh, you need to actually get something called a domain and we'll be talking about in, we'll be talking about domains in other sessions. So, so there's a reason if it's, if some things like aren't adding up yet, there's a reason for that. So don't be worried. But if you do have questions revolving around the things we're talking about, I'll try to explain it better. So right now, what we're discussing is stuff we can put on our website. Because if we have a website and then we have nothing to put on it, we've basically just done nothing. So first, we're going to learn how to put stuff on our website. We're going to learn all the types of things we can put on our websites, uh, like code. We can put in text. We can put in headings. We're going to learn how to put in images, uh, forms, uh, buttons, stuff like that. And then once we're done that, we're going to learn how to put that website online. So does that make sense? Does that answer your question? I know what a domain is. Okay, that's sick. That's awesome. Okay, so first let's just learn the main components of a website. So videos, audio files, images, forms, all of that. And then once, or even before that, if you'd like, uh, once you've learned everything you want to have on your web page, you can just tell me and I'll go, okay, I'll tell you how to put it online. Okay. So today we've discussed some elements. Uh, we'll be discussing a lot more elements next class, but this is not the end of the class still, because uh, now we're moving on to the extra activities. Let me just go back to this presentation. Uh, hopefully we can see my screen still. 
Let me make sure. Okay, so we can still see my screen. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so hopefully that answered your question. Um, so yeah, if you once again, if you have any questions or comments, because we did learn a lot today. And don't even be worried whatsoever if you misunderstood something, because that's bound to happen. Because you only actually learn when you make mistakes. Okay, so if you have any questions, please put them in chat or any comments or anything you just want to clarify or you want me to clarify better. Okay, uh, so yeah, we've learned about solar. And yeah, so we're actually going to be using solar now with the extra activities. Okay, um, so I'd like you guys to create a solar. Uh, Funke, uh, could you type that in chat for me? Hopefully, you know how to use Google Meet chat. What does H1 and H2? Uh, the H, uh, I'll just go back to the slide quickly. Um, the H uh, represents a heading. Yeah, perfect. So you've said it. It's a heading. Yep, good. Everybody's answering. That's awesome. Uh, so it represents a heading. And then that number after it represents the size. So H1 is the largest heading you can get. And then after that, H2 is just a little bit smaller than H1. And then H3, H4, H5, all those just keep getting slightly tinier. It's pretty much just a heading. And a heading basically means a title. H1, H1s are headings. The Ps are paragraphs. So those are text. Those are like tiny paragraphs. So if you're in school and you've ever had to write something out, you'd maybe put a title at the top of your page. And then maybe you'd put like tinier words below. You guys might have done that in school when you're writing. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to have a recording of the session? There actually will be a recording of the session because uh, I, yeah, there will be a recording of the session. And I believe one of the admins will actually help you out with, or sorry, moderators in the chat will actually help you out with accessing it. So yeah, there is a recording of the session that you can visit. Anyway, so hopefully that asks, answers the questions about the heading tags. We're getting close to the end of the class, but luckily we're also getting close to the end of the lesson. Um, so here are the extra activities. Um, so these extra activities are basically here to help you continue learning um, throughout the course. Um, so if we discuss something in class and you get an extra activity at the end, that's basically just to help you make sure you mastered what we learned today. Um, so these are extra activities. These aren't homework. So if you didn't do it, don't feel like, oh my gosh, I didn't do it. So this is not like school. This is not like homework. And these are just basically to help you. So the thing about the extra activities is that, as you might have heard, I'm only going to talk about this briefly. I'm not going to say too much, but you can get rewards from completing the extra activities. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to say anything else because I don't know what I can say about it. So, yeah, you can get extra. You can get rewards from doing all the extra activities. And it's just going to help you with the next lessons we have in the future. So today you might have already done the first extra activity, which was to create a solo learn account. So that's check. Um, I would like you guys to complete module one of HTML fundamentals on uh, SolarLearn. So actually, I believe I have a typo here, but I fixed it in the assignment, luckily. Um, so I'd like you guys to complete lesson one of module one in SolarLearn fundamentals. So I'll show what that looks like here. Um, so from where we have this open, we have our HTML fundamentals. So there are three modules, to or sorry, four modules total. So module four covers HTML5, module three is a challenge. Module two is HTML basics, and then module one is the overview. So I'd like you to complete lesson one of, actually, no, I'd like you to complete lesson, the whole of module one, sorry, that's my mistake. I'd like you to complete the whole of module one. So it's actually very short, uh, it just tells you what HTML is. We've already learned that uh, HTML basic document structure. We've learned that uh, creating your first HTML page. We've just done that with the text and the P and element. Um, creating a blog and then module quiz. So we've actually done all of this already. So it should be very fast, maybe less than 20, less than 15 minutes. So yeah, complete this whole module one. And then now's where it starts getting a little bit more complicated, I guess I could say. So let me go down here so we can see it present. So with uh, your completed uh, completion of module one, I'd like you to submit a screenshot of your completion on Solo Learn. Or sorry, yeah, submit a screenshot of your mod completion of module one on Solo Learn. And then also like you to find 10 new HTML tags and figure out what they do. So you're just gonna go online and you're gonna search HTML tags and you're just gonna tell me what they do. So 
there's definitely a question. Um, the question is, how are you actually going to submit this stuff, right? Module one, that's on HTML fundamentals. I'll just show my screen again quickly so you can see that. Um, so if we look at the top again, you would go to courses. Courses, you can scroll down to um, HTML fundamentals here, press on that. Okay, so now once you're here, oh, you didn't have to mute it, that's all right, Sharif. Uh, yeah, it might be hard to ask this type of question in chat. Um, so now that you're here, uh, you see lessons, there are 44 lessons in total. Of course, we're not gonna do all of them in one day. Um, so now module one is this. So module one just covers the overview. So another way you can say is that you just need to do the first five topics. So that asks you what HTML is. It teaches you and it asks you questions. So it's, yeah, it's very simple. And yeah, so this just take you, this specific module one should take you less than 15 minutes, um, not counting creating your solo learning account and getting that set up, of course. So this is very fast. Um, it's notes and questions. So I'll tell you HTML is a hypertext markup language. And then it would ask you, what is HTML? And then you just type in the answer. So stuff like that. It's very simple. Um, here, I'll put the link in chat just to make it more simple. So this is the link you want to take. Okay. So yeah, this is all coming along. Uh, yeah, so hopefully, yeah, Sharif put the link as well. And yeah, so now we're moving on to the final thing, which is actually submitting these extra activities. So let me make sure I have the right pages open. Let me go back here. Okay, so I believe all of you should have gotten an email with um, some login information for the Learning With Me accounts you guys have. Um, so you wanna log into that account uh, once you're logged in, you guys need to join this Google Classroom. So I think you might have gotten an invitation. So let me just check the people in the Google Classroom so we can actually see. So some of you might be in it, some of you aren't. Okay, great. A lot of you guys have gotten into the, or sorry, a lot of you guys have been invited. Yeah, most of you guys have been in, invited to the Google Classroom. Some of you guys have jo joined. Uh, so yeah, those people who have joined, that's great. Um, so yeah, you guys need to look at your emails with those learning with me accounts. I believe you can ask your parents for more information. I'm not sure if it was sent to them. I uh, see so yeah, that's great. You got an email. Yes, yeah, so you need to log on to that. Go on Google Classroom and accept the invitation for the learning with me invite. So that may be a little bit complicated. Okay, great. You've already joined. Great. So if you haven't already joined, this part applies to you mainly. Um, so yeah, just please try to get into Google Classroom because that's going to be really important if you want to claim the rewards from the extra activities you complete. Uh, which email are you looking through? Which inbox are you on? Are you on your personal Gmail account or are you on your learningwithme.org account? Okay, yeah, Malachi, you, yep, you can reset your password. I believe that popped up. You're on your personal account. Okay, go, did you? Yep, that's the account you need to use. Uh, we wish it didn't have to be set up like this, but it's mandatory for some reason with Google. Yep, ah, no problem. Yep, hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, let me see what's actually happening there. That so we have some people working in the background solving these issues. So luckily, if you don't have one now, or you're not able to find it now, this should be done by like the end of today, hopefully. Um, so let me think of what we can do. Um, so you don't have an account. So first of all, where have you actually checked for your account? Also, by the way, this is what the screen should look like for you guys once you've entered the HTML camp. So yeah, okay, some of you guys have already actually commented on these posts and yeah. So this is what you should see once you know you've successfully gotten in. So Google, make sure you're on your learningwithme.org account. Make sure you're on that account. 
Uh, pardon him? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that still. Let me increase my volume. Okay, can you say that one more time for me, please? Mobile users, okay. Um, so the thing is, most of this course actually requires you to be on a computer. Um, for the last rotation we had, which was a group before you guys, we didn't make it too mandatory. But now, uh, just to make it easier for you guys, I really highly, highly recommend that you do this on a computer. So some things I won't be able to help you with if you're on mobile, and some things I will. So for this case, I can actually help you. Uh, on your phone, there's a Google Classroom app on wherever your app store is, if it's the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. So you can download Google Classroom from there. Or what I recommend is that you use it on a, a proper like laptop or desktop. Because on a laptop or desktop, you can just multitask easier. Okay, they'll send you out a new one probably. No problem. Yes, yeah, so we yeah, that's what we had in mind. We knew a lot of people probably don't check their email that often since this is a younger audience. That's great. Uh, I believe the moderators are about to send you a new password reset link again. Okay, no problem. Uh, so if everybody's in the Google Classroom, or for people who are in Google Classroom, I'm not going to hold up too much of your time, so we'll just do this quickly. Okay, so you're on the Google Classroom, and you should be on this home screen page. Uh, let me just make sure, just to see who the people in Google Classroom are, just so I can know who I'm specifically talking to. Okay, so Nadir is in. Uh, I'm sorry, I, see, I don't want to try mispronouncing that name, because I know I will pronounce that wrong. Mobu yeah, I'm not going to try. Okay. Vardant in, Samantha is in. Okay, so for all these people who've already accepted the invitation, Brian, uh, Pearl, yeah, for all you guys that are in, I'm just gonna show you guys how it's done. And then the class is pretty much at its, at its end and you're free to go. For all those people who are not in, we're gonna spend a little bit longer trying to set that up. But we have reached the one hour mark, so let's just start wrapping it up. Okay, so I, okay, so you guys are in the Google Classroom. So you're on this page here. Uh, you've hopefully seen this first course. It's just an introduction to HTML. And then under is where it starts getting important. So we have um, the HTML camp materials, and then we have the extra activities. So what the camp materials contains, uh, I don't think I'll be able to show it with this count. But if you press on the camp materials, um, you should see a little, let me see. Oh, no, I can't press on it. So you press on the camp materials. I you should see a quick like maybe sentence just saying this one's not important just says mark of new journey uh, you can actually put comments here if you would like and then the most important thing is that the camp material so the slides we looked at today are right here for you so you want to press on these slides if you want to look over them and you can just go look through it again and see things you might have missed or things you want to look over again so you can open up these slides it'll open up a new page it's going to load up, and then you can just scroll through the slides we discussed today. So that's what's under the camp materials. It's the materials that we use for the class today. And yeah, once again, you can put comments down here. And yes, yeah, so now we're moving on to the next thing. So this page I know for sure is going to look like from what it looks like from a teacher's uh, perspective. Um, but yeah, you want to press on extra activities uh, for HTML. Uh, let me see if I can see it the same way you guys would see instructions. I think that works. Okay, so this is the page you guys are going to see. Um, so these are the extra activities. Uh, this is due Wednesday, the 26th of August. And yeah, so this, this is your homework. Um, in the I've attached a Google Docs. You each have your own Google document that you can edit and write stuff in. I'll show that case that quickly as well. So remember, one of the homework was to find uh, 10 new tags in HTML. So in this document, uh, it's already attached once again. So you just change the title to maybe your name and the whatever is being contained in the document and title for it. Now, once this loads up, I'll just show a quick uh, demo. OK, yep. Uh, you can also look at chat. The moderators are posting OS is posting the classroom invitations. Uh, so yeah, I've attached a document, or I've attached 
uh, document for each student. So you all have your own. And then here you can answer your homework. So you say uh, one, the P tag, one, the A tag, stuff like that. So you understand, you think you're gonna be able to submit your homework as well. Hopefully everybody's gonna be able to submit their homework. So let me just show this again. So yeah, you have a document attached. Uh, it's down here, you'd press on that, it would open up. And then here you can answer the questions. You can say, these are the 10 HTML tags I found. It's gonna be a lot better for you if you're already familiar with the uh, Google Classroom Apps, all right? So you have that and then you can write in the answers. So maybe uh, head, I don't know, you're just putting in tags and yeah, you just keep putting in tags, and yeah. And then for the submission of the SolarLearn, uh, you need to take a screenshot on your computer. Uh, if taking the screenshot, and if you're not able to figure that out, I guess you can just take a picture with your phone of your screen. Just make sure it's readable. And um, yeah, so this is the homework. And yeah, so I'll just wait here. Any questions, I'll be looking at chat now. So hopefully, let me just make sure everybody's able to get into the Google Classroom. So once again, all of this is due the 26th of August, and it's very important that you get into this Google Classroom. So if you have any issues, you can actually unmute your mic, I guess, because the class is basically over and I can answer them. So let me just check. Okay, that's great. Okay. No problem. So just make sure you're able to get into the Google Classroom. And from there, hopefully you can uh, figure out the rest. So right now all you need to complete is day one extra activities. This one's probably already done. This one's 15 minutes at most. This one's just a screenshot, so like 10 seconds. And then this one's at most maybe 10 minutes. So yeah, it's pretty short. Okay, so I'll wait here and hopefully everybody got into the Google Classroom. If you're in the Google Classroom and you can do all of this, you're free to go. But if you're having trouble getting to the Google Classroom, I recommend you ask uh, questions. But yeah, great job everybody this class, I should mention that as well. Yeah, great job this class. And yeah, I look forward to learning with all of you guys. Uh, so you reset your password. So are you on the Learning With Me account now? Okay. Are you in the Google Classroom? Uh, can you tell me how to pronounce your name as well? You, the person who said they can't get the homework, can you tell me how to pronounce your name so I, so I don't? Aluan. New for me, okay. You can't, new for me. Okay, I'll get it down soon. Um, anyway, so you can't get the homework. Are you on the Google Classroom? Your mic's muted. Okay, so press switch accounts and switch to the learningwithme.org account. So hopefully you have an account like that. But yeah, I'll be here for a while, don't worry. We can get this done. Uh, it's probably just asking you to put capitals and stuff like that. You should probably have to follow criteria. So look for that crate. I don't know the criteria off my top of the head, but you probably need like one capital, maybe a certain amount of numbers and yeah. Hmm. Check the email. I think the criteria is in the email. I'm not 100% sure.
it's extra activities. We don't really call it homework. We call it extra activities because it's not like homework. It's not like you're going to get in trouble if you don't uh, do it. <laughs> so yes, extra activity. So you're there. Okay, that's great. You got there. Am I correct? So you can see the extra activities. Uh, you see the last one, that's all. And then there's a document here already for you where you can edit it. It's each student has their own. You can edit it and then you can put in your answers for the ones that require you to type things out. So try pressing on that untitled document and then try typing in an answer for yourself. Maybe type in a random HTML tag. To get into the Google Classroom, you first need to be on the learning. Are you on the learningwithme.org account? Um, I believe that account was sent to your email. The username for your account was sent to your email. So everybody who can't even get their learning with me at .org accounts, you should go check your emails for those accounts. That's the first thing you need to do. Okay, great. So just follow those criteria and then try changing your password again. Okay, um, so Nafumi, I think I pronounced that wrong. I just forgot it, my apologies. But if you are able to do the extra activities and you have no problems, uh, you're free to go if you like. So yeah, everybody who's on the Google Classroom and is able to do the home at uh, the extra activities and submit them, you're free to go. That's the end of the class. If you're having trouble getting into the Google Classroom and you're not able to access extra activities, uh, yeah, you might you need to stay and ask for help. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so what was I saying? Um, uh, oh yeah, if you already got into the Google Classroom and you can submit the homework with no problem, that's the end of the class, no problem. That's the end of the class and you're free to go pretty much. But then if you're not able to um, access the Google Classroom at all and you can't have your, if you don't have your Learn With Me account, you need to stay and then ask for help. I didn't get any email. Okay, I think the moderators, are you gonna get to you? So to actually get with that classroom link, first make sure you're on your learningwithme.org account to even use that link. So why didn't you get an email? What does the email not contain? Are you talking about the classroom invitation email or the account information email? Okay, so you guys are actually uh, free to unmute your mic and ask questions. I think that might be easier than typing now. So you can unmute your mic and ask questions. Yeah. So log into that Learning With Me account, then press the link and you're good to go. So Sharif, have you accessed the Google Classroom? Do you, have you used Google Classroom in the past? Do I need to explain that? Okay. Yeah, I do not know why it was made that difficult. <laughs> There's no problem. How do we send the extra activities? Um, there should be a submit option on your screen. Right now I'm on a teacher account, so I don't see that. But if you go there and then you have, if you put in work there and you like have something to submit, a submit option will, or turn in or submit, you press that button and you select turn in and then you can submit your work. I don't have the account. If you don't have the account, check your email for the account. So yeah, extra activity, yeah, exactly I was sitting in chat. Okay, you don't have the Learning With Me account. If you don't have the Learning With Me account, you should check your own personal email, or if it was sent to your parents' email, you should check that. I'll just show the home screen of what it should look like when you know when you've gotten there. 
Okay, people are typing Kai, that's cool. Okay, so yeah, if you're in, that's the end of the class for you guys. Let me just check the people who are in now. Okay, so more people have gotten in, it looks like. Okay, so some people are saying they did not receive the email at all. Okay, I think the moderators are gonna look into that. Okay, so once again, if you've gotten in, I don't wanna, your time is, you're free to go now, by the way, if you've gotten into the Google Classroom. Number. Okay, do you have eight characters total? See what happens when you, so what does it say when, does it say, what does it say? You don't meet requirements? Also Malachi, are you? Okay, yeah, maybe. Please, the extra activities is a blank document. Yep, the extra activities is a blank document. That one is blank because it's for you to fill. If you look on top, the description for that uh, has the homework. So just look on top of that. Here, I'll move the extra activities to the top just so we can see that first. Okay, so hopefully everything is in order now. So extra activities, that document is for you to edit. Uh, let me look into the instructions. If you look at the top right here, this is the homework. So all these uh, points are the homework for you to fill out and you put in the answers in the document. And you can also attach the uh, screenshot or you can just add the image within the document itself. For your learning with me account. Uh, I don't have a learning with me account. Okay. Um, let me think of what could be done. Okay, so I guess we'll just stay here a bit longer until everybody gets in. But I actually literally have another class coming up soon. So hopefully we get now we'll get it done before then. If we don't somehow manage to get everybody in today, uh, we'll be working on this. So we'll this will keep going on until Sunday, I guess. And you should keep a lookout on your personal email, guys. So I recommend, even outside of learning with me, I recommend that you guys check your email more often because that's going to be something you're doing when you get older a lot because of your job or career. So yeah. If you plan to like take plan to get more into technology and you want to work in that field, checking your email is like necessary. So make sure you check your email, guys. And especially now, you need to check your email so you can get your learning with me account. If we don't get that done today, we should just check anyways. Okay, so maybe it was just a glitch on your phone. Yeah, okay. Is it after we've done the module and we would copy and paste and submit? Um, no, you should take a picture or a screenshot. So with a picture, you could do it with your phone. So you can take a picture of your screen. This one's gonna be a lot harder. But then what I recommend you do is you take a screenshot. 
So if you search up whatever device you're on, um, you can say, for me, it's Windows 10. So I'd say short cut Windows 10 screenshot. Okay, yeah, Sheriff can tell you the, okay, yeah. So Sharif can even tell you um, the shortcut for it. Hold on one second. Okay, so I need help. So Tari, you can actually unmute your mic now if you would like and I can help answer your question. Okay, yeah, thank you, Sherry. Tara, okay. So Tara, what's your what's your uh, issue with the locking in? So what pro what you didn't you didn't. Or the, I think I get what you're trying to say. Um, you didn't get the email to your for the learning with me email, so you don't even have that one. Okay. Um, so are you sure that you checked the correct email? Do you have multiple emails? Okay. Um, okay, I honestly think, and I'm starting to think if it's best if the moderators help you out with this, because I don't have a, I can't pretty much uh, repu replicate, or sorry, mimic what's like happening to you guys right now, I guess I say, I can't really do that. So I think it's the best if the moderators help you guys. But uh, yeah, so talk and chat with the moderators, even Mahoom or Sherry can probably help you because those guys are, they know what they're doing. And yeah. So look out for OS and AM. Those guys are going to be the ones helping you, as well as Sharif and Mahoon, it looks like. Of course, unless if Sharif and Mahoon go. Or sorry, Sharif goes. Uh, do I use Android? Um, I'm currently working on a Windows machine. Oh, yeah. OK, so you have the Google app on your phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, HTML and CSS camp, yep. Nice. There's also an app on your phone, uh, Sherry, if you can download from the Play Store, or sorry, App Store. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, you were very helpful. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, so this was a great class. I guess I'm going to leave the rest of the moderation so I can't really do much anymore. Uh, so this was a great class, guys. Uh, Sharif, uh, just everybody who helped me out. Malachi as well. I know you did help. That was You guys were very helpful. Everybody else, just thank you for participating and coming. And yeah, I look forward to learning with you all in the future. So yeah, great job, everybody. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to say. Uh, I guess I can just leave the classroom open. I'll call it that. So I'm going to actually get up now so I won't be in front of my computer. I can just leave. But if anybody needs to tell me anything, like last second, I'll be here. Okay, great. Thank you, Sharif. You might become a mentor or in the future if you're interested, because it looks like you're gonna be very you're very good at helping people. Nice. Yeah, I don't remember actually. Did I talk about like how LWM operates this class? Did I talk about that? I don't remember if I did. Uh, this class that I'm talking about how LWM operates and how it um, how it uh, operates and how like the students can become mentors and stuff like that. Did I talk about that this class? I don't remember if I did. Okay, I guess I'll explain it better next class since a lot of people are gone now.
Your account was on. Your account was different from the others. Here you go. Okay. Yeah. Malice, looks like the, Malachi. Sorry again. It looks like they had a mistake on their side. Okay, guys. So I'm going to be heading out now. Uh, look out for AM. Uh, let me see. I, there's one more. AM, OS, and Mahoom. They're going to be helping you out in chat. And yeah, so once again, great class, guys. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for all the people who helped, like Sharif and stuff. So I'll see you guys next time, next Saturday, same time, I believe. Okay, bye, guys.